Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Um, in today's video, I'm actually not even doing a movie review. I'm doing more so a, um, a Netflix series. Uh, there's a series I've been watching over the past couple weeks for those who are wondering why I really haven't posted the video recently. Uh, there is a series that I've been watching on Netflix that I've been kind of getting addicted to. Um, it has roughly three seasons right now. There's even a, um, a movie-related spinoff that it has called The Movies That Made Us. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about the series The Toys That Made Us. And like I said, there's roughly about three seasons of this show on Netflix. I'm sure if you've searched The Toys That Made Us, you'll find it pretty easily. Um, I think most of the time the icon that's pictured on Netflix is like a Ninja Turtle or a um, Hulk Hogan, I think is another one for the action figure or the, the wrestling action figure episode and things like that. Um, but yeah, that is the video. I That is the special I'm reviewing on this video for you guys today is the Netflix series, The Toys That Made Us. Um, so in this series, you guys, basically for each episode, there's a toy line that's reviewed, or I would say that the historical subtext is look at of why certain toys are the way they are, why they found success the way they did. Uh, you know, you get toys like He-Man and G.I. Joe, Barbie, My Little Pony, Hello Kitty, uh, tons of different toys that are explored in the series. One episode that I really liked in particular was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode just because I loved the show, I loved the video games, and I even collected the toys from time to time back when I was younger. Uh, so this is a very interesting show. It's one of those shows, too, where even if you didn't collect that specific toy, there's something about each episode that's really interesting. You'll probably learn something about certain toys that you didn't know about or certain historical context about certain toys that you didn't know about from earlier. Um... So it's a very interesting show. You kind of get something different out of each episode. Certain episodes kind of give you a little more detail of why Skeletor became He-Man's villain or why um, G.I. Joe was more so sold as an action figure instead of a doll for, for boys and things like that. So there's certain things in certain episodes that explore certain things. They give you kind of more of a historical context as to why G.I. Joe was successful for the time he was sold in or why... Um, why Hello Kitty was sold the way that she was sold and how uh, she eventually found success in America, but it kind of took a long time for that to happen and things like that. So there's a lot of interesting things in each of these episodes of the show that I find really interesting. So let's go over some positives and negatives as to why I think you should also watch The Toys That Made Us, but also keeping in mind some of the more negative stuff too that I think the show could have worked on if they do go ahead with the season four at some point. So for my positives and negatives of the toys that made us, first and foremost, this is a very informative uh, TV series for Netflix. Um, there's just tons of things that I feel informed about that I didn't know about from earlier. Like, I did not know the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe became an animated series because they were worried the comic books ever sold with the action figures. Uh, a lot of kids wouldn't be able to read them quite yet because a lot of them are about four or five years old. So when you're explaining the background of the world that He-Man lives in, more than likely they're probably not going to be able to read that or understand that when they pick up those comic books with the toys. So what they had to do is, well, it's it's probably easier to show on television the world that He-Man lives in and why certain characters are good and certain characters are bad. So there's certain things like that that you learn in each episode that I really would have not known unless this series would have told me about that background of that toy line for that time. So there's certain things like that in the series that I think is really interesting. It's also very fun to watch. Each, each episode tries to make an effort to make it more fun. And like I said, what's nice about this series is if you've never picked up Hello Kitty, if you've never picked up a He-Man toy, if you've never picked up a G.I. Joe toy, this show does a good job of trying to make it fun for you to watch too, uh, trying to give you historical context on things, while also kind of telling you why the success was found the way it did. How come uh, the fall of certain toys happened the way it did? How come certain toy lines were discontinued for a length of time and then brought back a certain length of time later? So there's things like that that really make the series fun to watch. And for those who are like me who've seen a lot of movies and TV shows, you'll definitely pick up why He-Man started back up in the early 2000s again and why he was gone for so long and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of interesting things that make the series fun to watch and make each episode kind of more addicting than the next as a result. I also liked all the behind-the-scenes stories that were shared behind each toy. Um, going back to the He-Man one, I, I think the He-Man one was really interesting just because there were a lot of things that happened with that toy line that 
I really would have not known about unless I watched the show and things like that. Um, how the guy who illustrated Skeletor and came up with the idea of him uh, based him off of this scary skeleton character he saw at a fair when he was a kid and things like that uh, on this haunted house ride that he went on and things like that. So there's things like that that you would have not known about unless watching the series. And as a result, it's a very interesting series to watch just because you, you'll probably learn at least something new for each episode that you watch of the show. Uh, and going back to another positive I have about the show, that the historical subtext for certain toys was also very interesting why G.I. Joe was made at a time where people viewed war heroes as kind of the cool thing and the cool symbol to come home and uh, where young men were able to come home to their families after the war and things like that. How um, things like certain toy lines for like G.I. Joe and stuff, once again, they had to... Um, kind of move away from the guns and move away from the killing and stuff like that and have the G.I. Joe's face like giant octopus characters and giant swamp characters and things like that and kind of move away more from the war side and just make them heroes but make them heroes about different things and how certain toy lines had to do that in order for certain toy lines to not die at the time just because of all the historical things that were going on with people being anti-gun and anti-violence and things like that. So certain things like that you'll learn throughout the show that I thought were very interesting. They also got a lot of celebrities and certain cast members uh, involved with the series I thought was really cool too. For like the Ninja Turtle one, you got both the creators of that uh, comic book and TV series involved with that. They had the people who illustrated a lot of the characters. They had the people who designed, the, who designed a lot of the... Um, the looks and the designs of certain characters uh, for the Barbie one they had a lot of the people who kind of got to decide the dresses for Barbie and why certain Barbies had longer hairs than other and certain Barbies had more of a like a, a teenage appeal to them more so than they were for little girls and things like that so certain people were involved with the series I thought were very cool to see and a lot of them seemed like they had a lot of fun filming these scenes too so that's another fun thing about something like this is getting not only the people who were involved with these toy lines involved, but making sure they're having fun, making sure they're looking back at these times with a more optimistic eye than probably they were at the time and things like that. So certain people got involved with the series I thought were really cool to see, whether it was celebrities or people who were involved with these toy lines from beginning to end. For my negatives of the toys that made us, though, some of the, there's a lot of like business stat moments in the series that really are kind of boring. Uh, they kind of go over like the numbers and the, the values and why certain things had to be cut and all that kind of stuff while the toy lines are being made. So some of that stuff I thought could have been slowed down a little bit just because for me personally, I thought it was kind of boring. I was more interested in the side of how come it was selling at the time. How come they had to cut back on the guns for G.I. Joe? How come they had to t appeal more to teenagers for the Barbies at one point? How come they had to... Um, really focus on what Hello Kitty could do for America back when they were trying to sell it to America and how I eventually found success here and things like that. Um, so the business stash stuff, they could keep it in there, but I'd just say, I would just say if they do end up making like a season four or a season five for the series, kind of cut back on that. I think they, there's certain moments where they kind of overdo it a little bit and it does feel a little boring at times. And occasionally, too, some of the episodes are a little slow moving. With some of these toy lines, you can definitely tell there's a lot of bumps in the road as far as this toy line went from 1960-whatever to 1980-something, and then it didn't start back up until the late 90s into 2013 and things like that. So because there is bumps in the road like that for some of these toy lines, sometimes the show does feel a little slow moving because it does kind of have a hard time transitioning from the toy line of... 1980 something all the way to the toy line of 2011 and, and things like that so uh, certain times the show it does feel a little slow moving as a result but also another thing that the show does every once in a while is it does skip around in the timeline every once in a while so if it is a toy line that was discontinued in 1993 and it got continued again in 2015 uh, there's a lot of times in the timeline where they kind of have a hard time figuring out what to do material-wise as far as what was happening at that time and how come it took so long, how come there was a spark and interest from getting from the early 90s to the mid-2000s and things like that. So I thought certain things like that could have been better for the series. Uh, but for the most part, it does pretty good, but it does go into the show sometimes knowing that it does skip around in the timeline a little bit. So the show does feel a little bumpy as a result sometimes too. 
But overall, I'm going to give The Toys That Made Us a 9 out of 10. I think it's a great series. I think for those who watch or are interested in collecting toys or had toys as kids, and there's episodes of things that you collected as kids like Hello Kitty or Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers, um, or even if you know a little bit about the background of some of those things. I think you'll have a fun time watching the show. I certainly had a lot of fun time uh, watching it. Um, there is a series called The Movies That Made Us. Unfortunately, it's not as long-lived as this series was, so I don't know if that means that people weren't enjoying it as much or they just didn't have as many movies to play off of in that series. Um, so I may or may not review that one next. Uh, like I said, there's really only like four or five episodes, I think, at the moment for that show. Uh, but once again, just like The Toys That Made Us, there's a lot of fun things about it too. So for, if you need something fun to watch on Netflix and just are chilling for the night, need something fun to watch, I would definitely say The Toys That Made Us is a good show to watch. 9 out of 10 for me. I highly recommend The Toys That Made Us.